Hey guys, Brent Hill Build Show. Demo is done. We're gonna go through this house and sleuth it, right? We got 1950, 1870, 1915. How do you know? We're gonna look through, look at our clues, look at the things that tell us. Come join me. Okay guys, so we're here. The dumpster's, you know, three quarters full. We've got a lot of things that we can actually sleuth in here, right? We've got the wood we can look at, the carpet, that orange color, <laughs> kind of kind of funky. Look at this shower pan, right? Made with fiberglass, and so we know it's probably from the 70s. There are all kinds of clues that we're gonna look at when we walk up on this porch and we walk through this house, but why does it matter? Well, if we're trying to be authentic, if we love the charm of this historic house and we look at it and we go, God, it's just such a great story and everything else. Well, to make it perform and to make it perfect for today, the contractor was saying, well, you gotta rip off all the side and we gotta do this, gotta do that. I'm like, no, 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 time out, time out. There's a lot of history here. There's a lot of great story here that if we start tearing those things away, we lose the charm. We lose the beauty of it. And I hate it when a flipper goes to a house and he rips out all the, all the good stuff, all the historic millwork, all the doors, all the hardware, puts in all new stuff and goes, yay, I did it. And you're like, oh shoot, you did it, right? And so history is important from the hardware to the cut nails, to the wood quality, all those things matter. We're gonna dive into it, come on. All right, so the easiest one is this. <laughs> this is a hollow core door, right? This is a, a door that was invented probably in the 1950s. Remember this, this plywood, it's called a Luan plywood. It, it is actually a grid of cardboard inside this door, and it is a cheap way of building a door. It happens after World War II. If you've watched my video on buildings and brew and mid-century modern, you know that a lot of cheap buildings started happening in that period in the 1950s. That is an example of that. 1950s, 1960s houses are full of doors just like that. What's it doing in an 1870s house, right? Well, it doesn't belong, so we've pulled it out. We are trying to go back to an age and a time, right? 1870, 1950, that historic period, so we can't have that in there. Come on inside. Okay, so guys, there's just little things in here. And if we walk through, this is the oldest part of the house. This is 1870s. Got a plank door with a rim lock hardware. Look what's happening here. And here's where you look at it and it's all painted yellow and you go, gosh, this is all built at the same time. But then when you start looking closer, you see that these are three and a half inch wide boards and these are like eight inch wide boards. Well, this was added later, okay? This was the stair that ran up in there. They added this later to get some closet space, right? They don't have closets in the 1870s. And so look at the windows. We've got one inch sash. It's, it's less than an inch. It's a, like a three quarter inch sash that was, was used historically. So we've got a bunch of different things going on in here that kind of give us clues and of where we are. The rim lock hardware there on that door, right? Very definitive and tells us a story. Now. We're walking back into this area and we're like, uh-oh, okay, something happened here, right? The floor, we kicked up on the floor. If you see what I'm doing, I'm looking at every single detail. It's not just the floor, it's the color, it's the type of grain, it's the color of the wood, it's the width of the board that was all used. If we measured those boards, they're all random widths, right? There's eight inches, five inches, six inches, three inches, right? All different things that are changing. Early industrial for Texas, certainly, they probably didn't have sawmills around here, and so they got those floors another way. By 1915, they absolutely had sawmills, and so every board is exactly the same, tongue and groove put together. I got an aluminum window, okay? Aluminum, as a window product, doesn't happen again until 1950s after World War II. And so we've got wood windows in some of these areas, we've got uh, aluminum windows here. Look at this door, okay? This is the only door on here. There's a screen door and then there's a plank. Look how they've notched this in here, okay? So, you know, there's your exterior door, right? This is a, a plank style door and look at how it's notched in here. Look at that beautiful joinery there. The chamfered edges here, how that's notched in. This is a, you know, absolutely an original door and you go, well, here's another confusing thing. What's it doing out here on the outside wall? Well, look, if I come in here, there is a hinge mark here and a hinge mark there. That door most likely sat here. So now all of a sudden, this room is that plank door, this plank door, and then this was added later. Look what's happened on the floor here. There's a cutout on the floor. Okay, that was probably our fire hearth. And so all of a sudden you start looking at this house and you go, okay, well, unless we know otherwise, this was it. 
right? This was, you know, you were living in this space and then that stair that goes upstairs, that was where the kids slept, right? And so if you look at really early stuff, guys, they didn't have a master suite and a parlor and a dining room and three bedrooms and five showers, and, right? It was one room, a bed in the corner, right? A couple chairs, kids slept upstairs. That's how it was. And so we're really seeing that early rustic nature of things and how, you know, what life was like in 1870s in, you know, Texas in a farming community. Now, 50 years later, they build this addition on, right? Whether it was the same family, I don't know, but they did, it almost looks like a Sears edition. So if we go over here, now we've got B board, okay? And we've got some, some moldings here. We've got egg and dart stuff going on. Uh, this is definitely a later period. This is late Victorian, right? Kind of a crazy little addition that was put on here. And then we walk into here. This room, because of these tacks that are on the wall, right? We know, and we can actually see some of the old cheesecloth here. We know that there was actually wallpaper. So we had a formal parlor with millwork. We had this room with wallpaper. And then we had another room on the other side, most likely wallpaper as well. You can see a, little, a small sample of it, right? So some detective could actually come in here and look at this and possibly even find out what design and style it was based on these small little pieces here. So all kinds of sleuthing that can go on here. Now we don't have, you know, moldings with the back band. We have moldings with uh, the shape that came from a molding catalog. All kinds of clues that are telling us when things were built, what's original, what's not. I think it's fun. Now what they've done here is they have the original. Okay, so they've timber framed. This is an 1870s timber frame. Maybe they re-roofed it later, but we've got new two by fours probably done when they did that addition, 1915, tagged along, sistered alongside these original beams. And because of those lines on here, it looks like it came from a sawmill. So interesting, 1870, where would they have gotten sawn lumber? Hmm, we'd have to, we'd have to do some research and figure that out. There's your original roof, there's your original planking. But we we're up over the main house and this is where the kids slept, right? There's the stair coming up, here's the living space, that was it. 1915, they add this on. And this is completely different because now we have nominal number, right? This is an inch and a half by three and a half. That's a true two by four. You can look at the wood quality here. You can look at the flooring. Look at this. See this here? That's the old corner of the house. And there are nail marks in there. So something was on originally on the outside, but there's your mortise and tenon joinery and how all this thing was put together. There's an old mark where something else was. So maybe there, when they added these on, when we built these on, they took this out. Let's look at the other side. Yeah, same kind of thing, right? We've got a notch out. So there was some kind of board in there that was, it was done later. Uh, all oak though, you know, this is an oak board. These, are, these were the original setters probably built that. And I showed you before, the pegs that go in that hold this thing together but we've got mortise and tenon joinery here so early farm building put together slight step up where the addition was really interesting stuff certainly for texas okay guys that's it for this update in case you hadn't noticed it's like 270 degrees today it's so hot in texas right now we're having one of those blistering summers demo's done okay we are going to start some rough framing we're going to get some kitchen plans and some kitchen things done some more interior details we're working out with the designer aaron we're doing paint colors we're doing a lighting plan a lot of fun things still to come on this project as we watch restore it reform it 100 year windows on this thing should be a lot of fun be sure to follow me on instagram and facebook whole millwork whole homes sign up for the newsletter and if you're watching on youtube hit the subscribe button i'm brent hull thanks for watching